Kevin Ryan H. Foley, the Are You Garbage podcast. First time in studio. Thank you guys for what, coming in. What's up, man? Thanks for having us. Thanks I, for having us, buddy. I'm in Australia right now. This is coming out in a week. <laughs> time I, travel. I will be in uh, Australia. Have you gone to Australia yet? Not nope. yet. It's a 15-hour flight. I, that's what I hear. <laughs> It's 15 hours. It's blood clot central. <laughs> <laughs> Widowmaker <laughs> widow, widow maker air. Um, Two pairs of compression socks for that flight. <laughs> I get up and I walk. Yeah. In the middle of it, and the people like the flight attendant will be like, what are you doing? I go, I'm trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stroke out. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to I get off this plane with both sides of my body <laughs> operational. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's a great country to do stand-up comedy in, mm-hmm. but it's a long fucking flight. Yeah. You're go- I mean, you've been, you were there not too long ago as well, That's I That's also a mistake. <laughs> you can't go back immediately <laughs> because the people go, we get it. <laughs> we know what you do. <laughs> we're, we're aware. <laughs> but, yeah, we're doing well. We got Sydney's is sold out. Melbourne is on its way. Uh, then Brisbane, and then the other ones, we're doing Auckland, uh, New Zealand. Um... I we we canceled Christchurch. I thought more tickets would sell because that's where they had that shooter did that manifesto. <laughs> so I really was hopeful about Christchurch, and I said to my team, "I go, we're gonna be okay with Christchurch because that guy, what did he shoot up a synagogue?" Yeah. I go, listen, I'm just saying they're wild. <laughs> so maybe we're getting, and I'm not for any of that behavior. I'm just saying I think we're gonna move some tickets. <laughs> We did not, which makes me happy. Yeah, it's a good reflection. <laughs> it makes me actually very happy that uh, those people are not coming, you know? So uh, I, I, I love you, gentlemen. Everybody knows you are your garbage podcast. You are the best new podcast in the world. Thank, Thank you. you, buddy. Yeah, this it means a true. lot. Um, I wanted you guys on around this, even though it's warm out in New York today, which fucks me up. I like the fall to be the fall. Love it. Love I want, the fall. Right? Yep. The best. It's a little hot. A little too much. Yeah. I went swimming yesterday in the ocean. Whoa. Really? Yeah. Okay. Where at? Out in the Hamptons? Out Southampton, yeah, in the ocean. The October. Hamptons. What do you think? Atlantic City's out in the guy? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what this I guy's went to doing. Galveston, Texas, <laughs> and swam in the waters of the, the oil water. Um, but I, I want to talk about Halloween with you guys because I know. <laughs> I know that it's, is it the trashiest holiday or no? It ain't the classiest, I'll tell you that. It's definitely not the (laughs) fucking classiest. It's the greatest. It is amazing. Mini Snickers, let's go. As two two fat dirtbags who don't like candy and fucking mischief, you know what I mean? Where do you put the holidays from, from classy to trashy? Because that's kind of interesting. Do you go Christmas... As the classiest because you got the candle in the window and Christmas can go south. Not our, not our Christmas. Sure, yeah. right. What are you talking yeah. about? Dude? <laughs> Christmas can go south real quick. Nice That's, fight on Christmas morning. Yeah. yeah. Where uh, I think Christmas can be the classy. If you're going Catholic, I'll, like Easter to me, there's no like real boozing on Easter. It's Sunday afternoon. You go to church. Easter stinks. It stinks, but that's the classiest. I'll tell you right now, here's how we can ruin that. <laughs> Horseshoes. My family during Easter at my Aunt C's Holy house. Holy shit. God dude. rest her soul. <laughs> this is why I have the top rated episode. You do, which just I know, passed a million, by I the know way. Shane and Segura are, are uh, climbing on me. I know it. But I'll tell you this my Aunt C, God rest her soul, uh-huh. and her husband, Uncle Bill, was a cop. Was that shooting justified? Hey. <laughs> now. Why are you bringing up old shit, Tim? Yeah. <laughs> Split second decisions. No, they were, they were good people. It was people. a different time. Yeah. They were good people. And, uh, you know, they had Easter Sunday and uh-huh. my family would drink and then throw horseshoes. Jesus. And so there, there would be kids running around Jesus. and then you'd have a metal horseshoe like whizzing by your head. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like you'd be in your church, you know, mm-hmm. so, and then like, you know, somebody would scream at you and be like, get the flat away! Yeah. And just sling a... Throwing metal through but the But I agree with you. In theory, in there's theory. nothing classier than Easter. Yes. Yeah, but it sucks. And I always thought in horseshoes that I wasn't good at it because I didn't have a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Well, that's, that's what I true. thought. That's or, what I thought made the uncles that good. It was a Heine. You had to have a Heineken. Sure. And uh-huh. a cig hanging out he, of the mouth. In the throw, you had to have that. You had to have it. And yeah. they were, and they they played horseshoes during Easter Sunday. And then Easter Saturday, we would do, my nanny would do a, a pink ham, 
and she'd with, sure. with a mustard vinegar glaze. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which was real nice. And then she would do, uh, you know, the sides and stuff. Yeah. When they, uh, when those honey baked started getting that popular, changed the game, that's dude. a big deal. That was like, we're going to get the honey baked, the yeah. spiral cut. Yeah. Woo, cheese little, potatoes. Little cinnamon apples. Yes. Yeah. Of course. But I'll tell you why Easter can kick rocks. One, pastels. Get the fuck out of here. Interesting. I hate that shit. Interesting H. Foley coming out against pastels. Ah, yeah, he dude. takes the hard takes, that <laughs> yeah. H. Foley. Early, early on in the episode. <laughs> church is nice on uh, church on Christmas. No, but I'm just saying, you know, you have you have something nice on. It's the winter. You're not going inside. You're hanging out in the back. You're goofing around. Yeah. You know what I mean? You maybe got a couple of M&Ms or some Hershey. It's not as proper, it feels, yeah. Dude, fucking... Easter, you feel like you're a used car salesman. I'm walking around in a pink blazer <laughs> like a dickhead. Get will, out of here with that. I will tell you one thing about Easter. There's what the the Easter cigarette outside of the church. Oh, <laughs> oh it's nice. Oh. Grass is coming in. Yeah. There's a cold, little bit of a breeze. Yeah, a little sunlight. bit of a breeze. I'll give you're you that. still sweating. Yeah. Oh, you're man. still sweating, but the sweat's being cooled by the breeze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're having a ciggy outside the church. Dude. And the priest, they're all looking at you. Go, I know what I'm doing, uh -huh. but I'm here. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm and on the property. I'm here. I'm on the property. I'm they here. were always waiting to rip a heater. That's Remember right. Remember the first time you saw a priest <laughs> ripping, a, ripping a dart? Uh huh. <laughs> behind the rectory? Holy shit. Yeah, he's like, I got to have something. Yeah. You know? So Easter, I think you're right about that. Easter does the can kinda, the candy's it, whack too. It presents as the class. I don't like the candy, and I don't like you know the the Easter egg uh, hunt the basket. Hey hey hey, what are we working for here? Yeah. <laughs> Just I know There's you got to give it to me. Yeah. There was only one that had a five in it. You know, my aunt used to hide these baskets so aggressively that people would start crying. <laughs> me and my cousins would start crying. Uh, a ba there was no baskets. He was, she would hide them in places. My grandfather had did well, and mm -hmm. he built his own house in in Muttontown, Long Island, which is an area where oh, Jennifer shit. Lopez. Muttontown doesn't Mutton sound nice. <laughs> Muttontown <laughs> no, it's it amazing. Like behind a butcher. Shop. No, I know, but it's a, it's one of those things rich people do sure. where they're like you you'd think it's not, but it's it's stunning. And he had a 5,000 square foot house, which Ooh. to us was huge. The big house. And, but here's the problem when you hide baskets. Kids start crying because you look in a few places and people start getting upset now. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And my aunt really liked that because she was sick. She had demented, yeah. And she didn't have children herself. And, and when we, people would start to cry and she would just go, look, look, look harder. Work harder, and we'd run up and down the stairs, and then we'd eventually find it. And then what was the treat? Nothing, you Set. know. A couple of pastel, you know. You get a nice um, Reese's duck. Uh, I mean Reese's what? What is it? Bunny a bunny or whatever. Bunny. Egg, those, yeah. those were art. The peeps. Can, Reese's egg. Yeah. Peeps yeah. can kick fucking rocks. Dude. Reese's egg. The Cadbury. I do like a Cadbury cream. McFlurry Love a Cadbury cream London. egg. Love them. A Cadbury cream McFlurry in London is nice. <laughs> Holy shit, really? They're doing that over there? Welcome to the world. <laughs> oh. Welcome to global. I got to get a passport. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. And uh, The candy didn't catch up until recently. When, I was, right. when we were kids, it was the shitty, low, 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 off-brand chocolate bunnies like, that were hollow. The and, wax. And it was, like it was waxy all waxy chocolate. Yeah. And it was chemical taste. Yeah. yeah. It sucked. You had a chemical taste. And Not plus, good. I remember Was getting... it a Russell Stover? What what kind of bunny did you get? Russell Stover, I'd be all right. Russell with. Stover was the one that was kind of mid-grade. Yes. Mid-grade, respectable. <laughs> Your father still has a job. Sure. Yeah. You got a Russell Stover. You got yeah. a bonus that year. Lint. Is a little next level. Lint. Who lint. was getting lint? That's cr I didn't have that. Till, <laughs> I, wasn't I didn't have that till thirty two. <laughs> yeah, a lint. touch of sea salt. Sea salt or chocolate. About it. <laughs> the lint bunny is a nice bunny. Huh. Oh, the lint bunny is a good bunny. Yeah. I remember one year getting a solid white chocolate crucifix. And I was like, can Man. I see if you can even find it? <laughs> can I? Eat I would this? love to see a solid white <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> I was like, can I eat this? <laughs> Crazy. That was definitely something they gave out to the, for the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> By the way, it's real. It's real. Yeah, I love yeah, like dude. you can get a white chocolate crucifix. How, how do you feel about the white chocolate? Oh, thing? sucks. I'm a fan. Here's what I like. I love it. I like it in ice cream. My, well, my favorite flavor in Haagen-Dazs is a white chocolate raspberry truffle ice cream. That's good. When Godiva had their ice creams, Damn. and they were only around for a few years, mm -hmm. in the glory days mm -hmm. of the late 90s, the early aughts, the early 2000s, they had a white uh, chocolate raspberry ice cream. 
White chocolate raspberry in ice cream might be one of the greatest flavor combinations. It's good. But as an actual candy, I no. don't like it. The mm. only one that kind of hangs in there is the Hershey's cookies and cream. Of course. That's a That's little okay. different, though. Yes. Yeah. It Agreed. was so classy to me. It was yeah. so, like, you get it once a year when it comes. Or I love it. Was, I, I think, looking back, I don't know if I love the taste, but I love the idea There's of it. a pageantry to Easter, the flowers, the church sure. and stuff. It, it is, in theory, classy. So we put that at number one. We're ignoring, by the way, uh, I- Islamic and Jewish holidays here. <laughs> not because we're not inclusive, but I don't have any experience. Do you, gentlemen? <laughs> no, I no. do not. <laughs> we don't have any experience with Ramadan. Uh-huh. Or- I was always uh, jealous of my Jewish friends on Christmas Day that got to go get Chinese in a movie, though. I say yes, that all the time. But it's sad. Yeah, I don't. It, there's I, a see, sadness I didn't think to so. it. I thought it was under the radar and chill. No lines well, and we, a nice Chinese restaurant. You well, can do I that on a yeah. Chinese restaurant. You can do that on a Tuesday afternoon. Go That's catch a movie and yeah. Chinese food. It's something that we would do. They do it then as like a, They got nothing else going on. That's right. It's actually a little sad. Yeah. I loved it. It's a little sad, but. I, I will say that, like... little Kung Pao chicken and Saving Private Ryan? Well, Let's there's nothing wrong. Go. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Let's go. Shout out to D-Day. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a little Kung Pao chicken. Or, you know, you got to remember, like, you know, that being... First of all, that that had to be amazing when movies were amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh, when you yeah. were, like, yeah. a big we're, blockbuster. We're doing some low main in The Mask. Yeah. Right? Oh. Like, 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 oh, we're going to see Ace Ventura, too. Like... When movies were now, I feel like it's not as, you know what I mean. And people are probably doing it at home. It's like, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get takeout and watch and throw on. Oh Netflix. fuck that! No. Yeah. No, I want a nice Chinese restaurant where they put the uh, yes. the crispy noodles on the table in a bowl. The good ones, not the ones in the fucking bag. No, the good ones. The good duck sauce and the good hot mustard. And then you go out to the big screen, and you see something good. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. it's all right. I agree with you there. Is Christmas the de facto second? <sighs> I, I mean, Christmas can be very, very. Tra- this Christmas on Are You Garbage was one of the first. One of the first questions we ever came up with yeah. was, "What color were the lights on your house or your tree?" Yeah, it could swing right. so White hard lights, either way. Class, that's correct. Colored lights, yikes! Easter, right. everybody's got to kind of show up somewhat proper. Agreed. Christmas is degree. different. Christmas has declined in my household so much mm-hmm. that I have. First of all. The prevalence of sweatpants and sweatsuits <laughs> sure. it's, it's up there. and slippers uh-huh. and snuggies uh-huh. and weird, like, comfort le- leisure wear uh-huh. has, is insane. Yeah. And the who cares attitude about the food and the presentation is troubling. Yeah. You're, and you're not wrong. It's because a lot of these boomers have checked out, you know, they're- Sure. My grandmother was a great cook. My nanny was a great cook. These people <laughs> were out there making- Prime rib, mm-hmm. cream of broccoli. Starting soup. first thing in the morning, cooking. You after All presents, day, yeah. they get at it. They start going. These boomers, Mm-mm. about forty-five minutes before people come, <laughs> take a fuck around to Xanax uh, and then throws cheese yeah. on a platter. Store bought cheddar cheese on a platter with some triscuits, and then God only knows where we're going from there. The chicken, yeah. the Chick Fil A nugget tray, right, has hey. ruined this country. <laughs> That, no, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> listen, I gotta listen, put my foot down on they're that. They're fantastic. <laughs> You're crazy. But yeah. once that started showing up in Philly, then the soft pretzel tray showed up. That's big. I, everything. The soft pre- I will tell you this. I love it. Oh, I mean, they're it's, great. It's I'm not nice. saying they're not it's great. It's nice. But when they when they chart the decline of this empire, yeah, the soft pretzel. <laughs> You're nuts, dude. Is getting mentioned. Oh my god! Because you bring me here and do this to me. Too. That- soft pretzel is. There's nowhere to go from there. That's that's gonna be positive. No. Yeah. Well, so no. Philly soft pretzel is a company. Philly soft pretzel company. I'm well aware. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, for the listeners for in, in the Midwest, <laughs> he owns thirty <laughs> percent. He's I'm got a part th- owner. <laughs> he's got three locations. <laughs> I just opened one out of Hamptons. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Dude, it would be great. That's, That's all, what wait, you need to no, do. You yeah. need to start doing that. Content purposes alone, yeah. the three of us should open a, soft, a Philly soft pretzel <laughs> company. No, it'd be amazing. And it would be... Get it, a Rita's in the Hamptons. It would be the... the <laughs> Shout out to Rita's, by the way. I love Rita's, but it would be the best episode of Undercover Boss, because immediately they'd all be like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, these motherfuckers. <laughs> the three of us. We all have fake mustaches on yeah. and shit. 
We're like, so how long you been working what, what's here? Huh? Me and H. Foley are like, what's a pretzel? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Oh, you dip it in the cheese. Oh, okay. That's good to know. What uh, uh but you're you're saying that so the, so yeah. the pretzel tray uh I just had one it was uh Labor Day weekend my brother's house I got there early the pretzel tray we brought the pretzel tray we stopped at it it sat on my lap the whole ride over to the car oh, dude still I warm. was salivating and you could feel it on the thigh yeah oh. yeah and it's the and nuggets the salt mm -hmm. you feel oh. the salt and oh. it's on the thigh I would be lying if no, I said that we, I went out, we cracked it open in the car I went out with Ray Comp and his wife <laughs> after my mother's funeral to a bar in Long Beach called the Saloon <laughs> and we're sitting in the saloon and we got the soft pretzel tray with the cheese in the middle and it is nice. It's awesome. It is nice. It's communal. It brings people together. It really does. <laughs> um, but now the, the dips, they have, they have the cheese dip. Like what the else cheese, do they have? They have, they have cinnamon. a cinnamon, mm. cinnamon that will blow your fucking okay. hair back. Dude. Now I'm I'm kind of liking On this. On paper, you look at it, you're like, that I don't know if, dude, one little dip of that. Yeah. Day is changed for That'll the better. Change, yeah. It's fantastic. I like that. And you could even go back a couple of years with the cinnamon on that same tip, which started to go downhill. Remember when the fruit tray started to get a little popular, but it wasn't just a fruit tray. Remember the cream cheese? Yes. Whipped cream dip in the yes. center? Yes. <sighs> yes. Yes. But all that stuff, the reason I say it's the downfall of the of the empire, is that's replacing a homemade dip. A bubble that's of replacing dip. something that your well, I mean, grandmother used to absolutely. do. Absolutely. Um, and we, we're riding the slide down. I'm not I'm not complaining. There was always an aunt who came with nothing but a dip. Mm -hmm. This woman did not exist except to walk through the door with what that a dip. dip. Yeah. You didn't care about her. You didn't care what she said. <laughs> She smoked cigs in the back. Uh huh. Yeah. People were like, hey, like it was, no one cared. She had Coke bottle glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She would walk in, but she'd walk in either with like in the Northeast, she'd walk in with a clam dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She might walk in with a seven layer dip, mm -hmm. a seven layer Mexican dip. We were a big taco dip, we called it. Taco Ooh. dip, whatever you want to call it. Buffalo chicken dip. Yeah. Let's so go. this woman's walking in with a dip. She has nothing. Yeah. She has no children. No kids, a small old dog. She has a tiny dog. She has nothing in her life. She makes that dip once a year, mm -hmm. and she walks into the house, and, and her only social interactions on this entire planet are people like us going, you bring the dip? Mm -hmm. And she goes, <laughs> of course I did, and she smiles, and then we smile. Mm hmm and that's and then for the other 364 days a year, <laughs> she's dead. She just sits in her house yeah. and she watches soap operas and drinks and takes pills because her life is horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that moment when she goes, when we go, did you bring the dip? And her name's always like it's Rainy or something. It, yeah, it's right. It's Aunt yeah. Rainy's here yeah. with the taco it, dip. It's two <laughs> syllables and it makes no sense. I have to say, my mom is Aunt Nisi with the taco dip. Yeah, yeah. I swear to God, I swear. <laughs> Aunt Nisi, you doing a taco dip? And that dip is important. And you're right. <clears throat> now those people that we know that that dip was their life. They've died off a little bit. They've died off a yeah. little bit, or do they just show up with the? Because it's not as nice. When you're just bringing the pretzels. No, but it's also like, oh, and I'm going to invest three hours. I'm going to this store. I forgot. To, I got to go back to the, that's a That's an afternoon to make the taco dip, to make the buffalo chicken dip, to whatever. Or you go, on the way over, I'm going to stop at the soft pretzel, the Chick-fil-A, spend 20 bucks, and we're, we're I chart the downfall of my family parties. My aunt started making dirt. She started well, doing dirt in a, in a pail. In, the, in an actual pail? We, yeah, in the we used to do them in the, like, those clay pot, like those plastic yeah. potters. She yeah. would do it in a pail with the with gummy the worms. And, uh, and uh, she would put, uh, you know, the, the what is it, Je the jello pudding? It's like, yeah, it's jello, <laughs> it's jello pudding. The gummy worms. Gummy worms. The crushed Oreo or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That started a decline of dessert. Sure. That is very tough to, uh, you know, describe other than to say that that was the beginning, maybe of the end of my family. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first time I had that, it was uh, a luncheon after a funeral that was in a public park under an awning. Things I were going swear to well. God, That was the first time I saw that. I was like, what is that? Was it a funeral for a drive-by? And what they, the fuck? Ex they explained it to me, and I was like, 
Holy shit, that's genius. We ate it with yeah. a shovel. A like couple gummy worms in there. We had the shovels. You scooped it out with the shovel. We had the shovels, yeah. yeah. I mean, absolutely. That blew my brains about So it. To, to me, that was a big thing. But Christmas, you're right. It can go bad, and I've seen it go bad. Yeah. Do You start mixing booze, especially with my family. We're a big booze family. You mix in booze. And the emotions are high. Emotions high. are high. There's a, I have to, everybody spent a shit ton of money that month. Because Easter, you don't even feel like it's a holiday. No, there's no presents, Christmas, really. you're like, you were never there for me. Yeah. Oh, all of those emotions come rush between Thanksgiving and Christmas, those mm-hmm. two holidays. Those are holidays where you're the pressure. Redlining. It's right. It's, t- it's running through your veins. Credit cards are maxed out. Oh, God. You didn't get what you want. You and yeah. the wife are fighting. What are the How kids? are you going to pay? Kids are ungrateful. All that shit. The rich, the rich side of the family just kind of shoves it in your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah. That, yeah. Would, that would start up in our family uh, on the Friday. After right. Thanksgiving, because on the Friday after Thanksgiving, five carloads of our family would all head up to the King of Prussia Mall for the big day of shopping. Yeah. For the Black, Black Friday. Friday sales. Right. You'd eat at the food court. You know what I mean? You'd say tell your parents what you wanted and all this stuff. Right. Then you would leave with your aunt. They'd run in and get what it is real your food? quick. Are you a, is it a bourbon chicken? Are you a ranch one chicken and cheese? At what? Uh, at the food King court? Of Prussia. Oh, Where, what are you doing? We used a walk and roll. I used to love a walk, walk and, and roll. There's nothing wrong with that. I was a Sabaros man. I okay. loved it. Interesting. Still do. And by the way, I've eaten it in New York City. I, I, you want to hear something? You want to hear? You want to hear something? <laughs> when I was a tour guide in New York City, uh huh. Let me tell you about sad. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now something that I feel like it's 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 tough to even admit and come out of my mouth. Times Square Sabaro Breakfast Buffet. Whoa! When I was wow. a tour guide, what's in New that York, looking like? Not good. What are those? What are those? Ho- those home fries have the, to be the hash brown patties, frozen patties. Oh, right. which you like? I, I love. I love. love. And what you do is you take a patty, you put a little scramble, uh huh, bacon, and then you put the patty on top. You make a little Whoa. hash brown sandwich. And I would do it. Never s- thought to think they had it. To do Look, that. there it is. Look at that, New York. <laughs> there it is. Go to the third picture over there. It is. That's the part of the Sabaro uh, breakfast buffet. <laughs> they had a literal breakfast buffet in Times Square <laughs> that you could eat, and I would eat there uh, I sometimes don't hate before it. my tour, before I would give tours in New York City on a tour bus. Holy shit. That, had, more... that had to slow you down a little bit. Oh, Let man. me tell you right now, that first tour was real fun. <laughs> <then. laughs> Not a lot of tips on that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was, sometimes I would do the tour, I'd literally get on the bus, and I would go... Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd go, what? And I'd go, Hell's Kitchen. Then I'd go, Central Park. Uh-huh. <laughs> Central Park. Uh, and then Scrambled other times, egg burp. Yeah, yeah, I would just be like, Ugh. <laughs> Sometimes you try to hit a Bernie on the bus with no one seeing. Really? Yeah. You this go is why to, I love you. you it's like a the, baseball manager. You go the to the eight. back. Maybe there's, six, maybe there's six people on the bus. Maybe they're Russians. Russians are great. They're not, uh, no, they they're not rats. They like oh, they don't They're not rats. Shit. Americans are rats yeah. by their fucking nature. You give me a family from Ohio, you give me a woman named Donna, you're getting ratted out. Yeah. A woman named fucking Ivanka mm-hmm. or, you know, or, or her husband Oleg, they mm-hmm. don't care. She you wants to, a drag. She wants a drag. Yeah. She's maybe hitting one. You go to the back. You're just like this. You know, you hide it. Yeah. You and palm then, it. And you palm it, and then you just keep it to the side. Dude, that's crazy. You get a few, and then you toss it off the bus, <laughs> and then you keep going, you know? That's wow. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, so Christmas can go really bad. I think the... the Well, decorate... Christmas is yeah. one of the things you really decorate the house right. for. Right. Right. So it's like right away if that's bad, yeah. that's a real big indicator yeah. of what you're doing. Yeah. If the lights are just like kind of thrown across the bush in the front, yeah. you can see the extension cords, the things yeah. are flickering, there's like that's going to be a that's going to be a rough christmas inside. You right. got to have white lights. White lights. Outside. White lights. You got to have white I lights like on that. the tree. Or color lights can be done very well like kitschy. Like oh, it's like an homage back to the fucking 60s or whatever. But it's got to be done real like right. The one thing that does class up Christmas and this is depending on different families and stuff like that. If there was the uncle and the aunt that didn't have kids that did well, that showed up Christmas mm-hmm. day that had a stack of money holders in Ooh. their breast pocket, and, you're like just, and you're everybody them. was getting broken off with a fifth, well, I, when, a crisp fifty. When, when you opened the card from your grandparents and saw a hundred dollars cash or something, 
that was you were you were like start playing the market. Ecstatic. Let's go. Ecstatic. Mm-hmm. Ecstatic. Yeah. Because that was like the best press. I yes. had my Aunt Kate was a uh, exec at a big company in Philly. Cash, no kids. I was her godson. Just broken See, off. See, that's the regularly. guy that I kind of will be because sure. I don't have kids. So it's like, here's the money. Here, you boom. Know. Here you go. Here's an extra. Yeah. Hundred. Everybody's getting fifty. You get two. And I was like, there's something really nice about. Um, when a family gets it, like my family now, the kid, all of the cousins have gotten older, mm-hmm. but nobody's had kids. Ah. Mm. Nobody has populated. So I always said this: as you get older, the holidays, unless there are children, they get sadder. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, they you got to really, keep really fresh sad. blood. And uh, what happens is people just start. It just is sad, and this is happening. People start talking about cell phones. Like people have uh. sit on a sectional. And this is one to say, enough! <laughs> Sabaros. <laughs> it's fucking pizza. <laughs> I'm out of the office this week with strep throat. I hope you guys are enjoying this episode with the Are You Garbage Boys. Uh, and hopefully the Middle East, uh, you know, calms down. Um, but I want to talk about Blue Chew right now because I've talked about it for seven years. And that must mean I love it. Blue Chew is a pill that you can take to make your penis hard. And it has the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, um, but it's in a chewable form and you can get it prescribed online. There's no embarrassing doctor visits or bumping into somebody that you know at the drugstore because they will ship it to you in a discreet package. So you don't have to explain to your roommate or other members of your family what's going on with your penis. Blue Chew is good. So if you go to bluechew.com and use promo code TD at checkout, you're going to get your first month free. That's crazy. If you go to bluechew.com, use promo code TD at checkout, you're going to get your first month free. uh, And that is a big deal. And again, I'm out of the office with strep throat. I'm hoping everything is going well. And I hope that... uh, from uh, the Ukraine to Israel to the Gaza Strip to all of these places that we could all kind of just cut it out, cut it out and stop being knuckleheads, as my uh, nanny would say, stop being dodo birds and knuckleheads and get the blue chew for your penis. People sit on a sectional and start talking about cell phones Uh and cell phone service and you start I can't saying, get any at the house. You start, right. Then you start spot. going, maybe there is no God. Uh, maybe this is pointless. How do you turn the ringer off? It keeps ringing. Right. I don't know how it is. <laughs> right. You know what I do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they all got to tip on well, it. Well, she's on our family plan now. As soon as the words family plan uh, come uh, out, man. I go, I'm out. <laughs> I'm yeah. leaving. I don't, this is a. This is nothing. This is less than nothing. This is a conversation people would have on a, on a public bus somewhere. In an elevator. <laughs> You're right. It's elevator talk. We don't... We we're family and no one cares about anything. That's when I have to go. And Christmas has now become you see these people, they're strangers. When you have a divorced family, like I do, yeah. You're sitting next to people, you don't know who they are. Sure. I don't know who my aunt, my stepmother's brother's niece is. Yeah. So I'm sitting next to people, I have no idea who they are. That's tough. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens sometimes in a, in a family of divorce. Yeah. Because now you're sitting at a table with strangers. Yeah. Although I will say this, my my stepmother's uh her her sister-in-law Libby does a shrimp scampi will change your life. <laughs> yeah, dude, Libby's all right. And she does and she does you know why? Because she uses garlic powder. Ooh. Not a clove has ever seen. Nice. <laughs> she just garlic powders that bitch like I mean it's crazy. And it's like fentanyl. It's just really, really good. Uh-huh. And you just eat like a pound of it, and then you're comatose, and you're on some sectional in a basement of a house, and then they then they just start going in about like, well, I, I'm AT and T. Yeah. I have a Tim is you know Tim is AT and T too. It, it just gets Tim. They have AT and T in L A. Like yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. That's, that's how bad it gets. <laughs> yeah. So, so you like, still get the unlimited minutes. You're right. <laughs> right. I envy here. the families. That almost have a tragedy now 
where it's like somebody went to jail, mm -hmm. where you can talk about that. <laughs> like, if there's one guy who's not there because he's serving time, mm -hmm. we can speak about him. It's at least like, a topic. It's a topic. It's real. I envy the families who at least have someone to talk about who's destroyed their life <laughs> instead of cell service or, like, traffic. That's another thing. How you getting home? How'd you get here? That's Traffic's big. crazy. We go down the shore every summer, and it's and right when you get down. You get down on a Friday. When you get down, when you's leaving, right. how'd you get? Do you take the yeah. Walt Whitman? It's that's it's traffic Wouldn't and weather. Wouldn't it be better if we all had some somebody to go? You know, you know, uh, you know. We 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 go, we're gonna visit him soon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna visit him soon. You know, he's Have doing. You gone yet? He's doing yeah. what he has to do. Like I was at my mother's funeral. And uh, did they say anything to you about Ronnie about what happened or right. anything like that? Did they, did they talk to you? You know, did you're, in, you're in the line getting <laughs> yeah. a scampy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. did they say? I, I, mean, I don't even really hear anything have about you, it. Have you heard from him? Yeah. I'm at my mother's funeral. This guy comes up to me. He goes, he goes, hey, he goes, I dated your mother back in the day. I was like, my mother was like hot back in the day. So I was like, oh, I don't want to. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Who said this to you? This guy at my mother's <laughs> funeral. Fucking Long Island We're right lunatic, in front of the urn. <laughs> We're, right the fuck, fuck, We're right in front of the urn. <laughs> she, we got her cremated. She's in the urn. <laughs> and we're sitting there. She's got this beautiful collage of like her on boats and her doing Florida things. And, you know, I'm sitting there and a guy the comes fuck? up to me. He goes, he goes, I dated your mother back in the day. And I go, uh, I go, oh, he goes, yeah, you know, my name, Jimmy. I'm not going to say his last name. He goes, I'm Jimmy. And he goes, you know, my son, James. I go, yeah, how's he doing? He goes, not good. <laughs> Immediately he goes, not good. I go, okay, like, <laughs> fine to leave it at that. Yeah. Fine to leave it at that, but they never are. He goes, yeah, he goes, he's got drug problems and he's got mental problems. Mm -hmm. So he's in the hospital right now and he's standing there with his wife. He goes, he's in a hospital right now, but he goes, uh, he sends his regards. He goes like this, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> swear to God. He goes, but he knows you. He goes, he knows you and he, he like watches your stuff and he goes, he's in the hospital right now and uh, he's trying and that's our attitude. If he tries, we'll try. And then Damn. he looked at me, he goes like this, he goes, you own something in the Hamptons I heard? <laughs> He, he goes, might pretty, be looking for a room yeah, when he gets he goes, out. Pretty nice out there, huh? It was just the way he said it. He goes, sure. he's in the hospital. When he tries, we'll try. Uh -huh. You own something out east, huh? That's not. It's just like one guy said to me walking out of my mother's funeral. He goes, he goes, blessing in disguise. No, like that's <laughs> Jesus. This Christ. guy that owned a surf shop. He goes, blessing in disguise. Because Long Island, you you, you have to understand, the death of a family member usually comes with some type of check. Sure, it comes with an inherited house. It comes maybe with a few Tiffany lamps. I never thought of that. <laughs> These it's... people in Long Island, they live to inherit. And once they've inherited, they then immediately start complaining about the taxes they have to pay on what they inherited. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just, you know, like immediately they inherit their mother's house. And then like the next day they're like, These fucking taxes. Yeah. These immigrants. <laughs> this community's falling apart. So when he's like blessing in disguise, it was kind of funny because he's like, you know, in all death in Long Island, there's opportunity. There's cash. There's cash. There's a pay. Yeah, there's there's, there's, a, there's a deed. There's a title getting transferred. But I saw these boomers walking into her uh, funeral, and I was like, it's just an amazing generation of people, mm -hmm. you know? They're just really amazing. Think about from where they started on this planet. You know, my parents were born in... 1952. Mm -hmm. They grew up during the 60s, the hippies, Woodstock. Now it's 2023. Okay. The amount of technological change in that period of time, I, I don't know that there's any generation that has experienced that in the way that these people have. It's no, true. at yeah. the age they were. Yeah. At the age they were. To see how different things are, you know. And to be able to go on all of these different applications and still be racist <laughs> and still keep the old ideas and the old value system through every new, from Facebook to TikTok, uh -huh. they are not dissuaded. Like, the fear and the paranoia that they just have, just to be able to, like, spread that on every new, and they can barely use these things, but they can use them well enough. They can get a status up. They can get something <laughs> up. They yeah. can get a couple of words up. And it, it, it's just one of those things where holidays, I think, have become less interesting because you know what all the people are doing. Sure. You know what they're doing and you know what they think. You and know like, what I, they think. I have yeah. that with, like, 
It's also like, you know, everything's been so political, like we were talking about over the past five years or whatever, and it's like, you'll go somewhere, and like, it's the second a conversation starts, well, everybody's hanging, we're at the... We're at the island and we're eating and we're drinking and laughing and breaking balls. And then someone's like, did you see this? And I'm like, Ruined. I'm out. Yeah. Right. Cause like I, my family's 90. I'm not that I'm, I don't know. I'm in, I'm neutral. I'm in the middle. I don't give a fuck, but they're yeah. all Republican. So it's like, but it's like, here's the deal. There's no reason on the, on the, on the salad line. Sure. You should hear the name George Floyd. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> There's yeah. zero uh -huh. reason. Uh huh. And they don't even pronounce his name right. Like one of my uncles once was like, this, uh, you know, George, uh, George. And then somebody's like from the other room, George Floyd, pop. Uh -huh. Like they were waiting yeah. for it. George Floyd. I go, no one has to yell the name George Floyd throughout the house sure. while we're putting meatballs on the plate. Yeah. yeah. With the alley hoop coming yeah. in. Like. Have you been down? Have you been down to the city lately? No, nah, you're going down there. What are you, crazy? Yeah. yeah nah, yeah. it's nuts. It's riots every night. It mm -hmm. turns so quick. It turns very quick, and it's like they want they want it. They get excited. When the political people come to the party, oh. they're, they've are they prepared talking points. Well, there's a fuse lit. The second yeah. they're in the door, you're like, is it two minutes? Is right. it ten <laughs> minutes? Three hours? I don't know when it is, but it's fucking happening, it's coming and out. I'm getting called a pussy real yeah. quick. It's coming out, and they're just like... They're, they're ready to pounce, and mm -hmm. it happens from both sides because my aunt is very liberal, and she likes to get into it, too. Like, we, she was out east at the house, and it's beautiful out, and it's nice, and, every, you know, my cousin's kids are in the pool. Like, everybody's doing okay. There's no, there's no reason for any of this. And she's just sitting there, and she's just eating food, and she just looks up from her lobster roll, and she's like, when are they going to put Donald Trump in jail? And I'm like, can you just eat your fucking lobster roll? Yeah. Can you eat your, for Christ, can you eat your fucking <laughs> lobster roll? $20 lobster roll. Yeah. 20 yeah. Come All on. Right. It's crazy out there. It's $80 it's, a pound. It's stupid. Exactly. It's stupid. You just eat it. But it's just, they cannot help themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they're, before they got there, they were at home for an hour and a half on some old laptop at the at the island in the kitchen, just going through Facebook. Yeah, and yeah. it's this and it's that and it's lantern flies and it's they're they're just going nuts. People so that's to, just and, in them. And you know what I think is interesting is people used to have intra family feuds, mm -hmm. and they would be about real things, like they'd hate each other over something that made sense. Now maybe it was silly, maybe it was ridiculous. You know, a famous one is like. Grandma died, the house got sold, somebody felt swindled. Money. Mm -hmm. money. My family doesn't talk to nobody right. because of money. Money's a big one. Yeah. Sometimes it's a thing. Someone got something in an inheritance, somebody should have. Somebody didn't go to somebody else's Christmas or kid's birthday sure. party. I respect but, that. You, I respect that. You, you're personally yeah. attacked, or you feel personally you're attacked. You're the real world. You didn't visit her at the nursing home. Right. We were out there every Sunday. Yes. Now people fight over politics which is the craziest thing to me. Mm -hmm. They hate each other because of politics, which is not affecting them really other than... Their day-to-day, -day, yeah. Their day-to-day, -day, other than they like the idea of, of, of having moral superiority mm -hmm. over the other people. We used to have... When I was growing up, there was this bear, this snuggy, you know, the uh, detergent. Yeah, of course. Huggy and bear, right? Yeah, uh, I, I forget this. Huggy bear. Snuggles. So Starsky and Snuggles the bear. Snuggles. Yeah. It was the bear. Okay, so yeah. Snuggles the bear. And my cousins, I had this Snuggles and I kind of gave it to them, but I didn't really give it to them. Something had happened or whatever. And yeah, it looked exactly like that. It's kind of creepy now that I see it. You had a laundry detergent bear? I had a snuggle bear, and then <laughs> my aunt, we would, all, me and my cousins would fight over this bear, fist fight over the bear, mm -hmm. and then my aunt at the end of the party would go to my grandfather, like, can I have the B-E-A-R, because she was taking it for them. They were German, nothing wrong with that, but let's just, it is what it is. <laughs> and they, you know, they believed in certain things. And uh, this was a big strain on our family that my family felt like, they had stolen this bear from me mm -hmm. and gave it to their Nazi kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? And things like that started feuds. Of course. Dumb things like that would respect start a feud. That. And I respect, respect that. that. Yeah. You know, I remember during the 4th of July one year, mm -hmm. my, 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 someone called my uncle's wife a, a Jew. 
my Aunt Dawn, <laughs> whose last name was Hassan, but she was maybe a little Arab. She had a nose thing. Was it followed up with by, she knows what I mean. Come on. It was one of those yeah. where it's like, let's not, we're not, it's fine. But, wait, 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 but, wait, you know, come on. They're good people. Right. Yes. right. I work right. with one. Right. Yeah. It's, it was that type of crazy. Yeah. So then he's like, fuck all of you. I'm going to leave. And drive home, and he was hammered. So, my <laughs> uncle, my uncle, and my other uncle went out and took the air out of his car. They flattened all of his tires, so he couldn't leave. Jesus Aggressive Christ. but effective. Aggressive but effective. This was Fourth of July. Me and the kid who lived up the block were sitting. I was sleeping at, at their house. They were like best friends with my uncle's family, so we all got to stay over there. The all the adults were just getting hammered. We were watching this whole thing from like a house down, watching my uncles take the air out of my other <laughs> uncle's car, so he couldn't drive away. And then my grandfather got up because then they wouldn't stop. And my grandfather was famous for doing this. He's done it a few times. He would, like, get up and go downstairs and knock somebody out and then just go to bed. Damn. So my uncle my uncle was getting really crazy. This was another holiday. And he was just spouting and being nuts. And my, my grandfather came down, just laid him out, went right back to bed. And then the next day, my uncle was like, who knocked me out? And my grandfather was like, I did. And my, my uncle was like, thank you. I needed that. And he goes, you know, any time. But he was like a PAL boxer, like yeah. an Irish boxer would just. And he, so we had a violent kind of drunken Yeah, I family. come I come from that. That's, yeah. There's fist fights or close to fist fights once a year. Easily. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So why can't we get back to that? I'm out of the office with strep throat this week, and I hope you guys are enjoying uh, the podcast with the Are You Garbage Boys. Love those guys. Um, many people don't know the story about when I tried to get tickets to the Taylor Swift concert, but I was desperate, and I started prostituting my body to get tickets to it because I couldn't afford them. And I didn't understand these scalpers and these websites, and I was prostituting myself and it was hard but I kept doing it for about three months in hopes that I could afford to see Taylor Swift at uh, I forget where but one of the places she was going so funny maybe and I I am a prost I became a prostitute because of it and I have AIDS and AIDS is not a big deal as much because you can survive with AIDS for a very long time. Although it is awkward to bring up. Um, and it's not even HIV, it's full blown. I have full blown AIDS, <laughs> which is not, which is still is bad. And because I wanted to see that concert so badly, I have full blown AIDS because I was prostituting myself. And I would let anyone do anything to me for any amount of money. Scat, piss, shit, blood, play, any of it, any of it. Do you know how much I love Taylor Swift? When you're getting just fucked by people you don't even know, because one guy, I would have, to, he would wear a mask and hold a gun to my head. And I would only, I would just be on all fours and he would just come in and I would see him in the mirror with the mask on and he would hold the gun to my head, which he said wasn't loaded and I hope it wasn't. And then he would leave. And it was, you know, I don't know if he gave me AIDS, but there was another way to do this. And I wish I had known about this app earlier and it was the game time app. And they have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats to the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. And that to me is exciting because you can get the best tickets, the best deals, no aids from this app. You, you just can do it. And if you download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code TIM for 20% off, $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code TIM for 20% off your first purchase. You're going to have a much better life because you're not going to be in a motel in Jersey with a gun in your head getting peed and pooed on so that you can go see Taylor Swift, you know? But when I finally made it and I was in that and she did Love Story, every time I was beaten by a trick, every time I was beaten by a trick, and it was a lot, every time I was beaten by a trick, pissed on by a trick, was worth it. When I heard her do Love Story, whoo, 
I would do it all again. But you don't have to. Go to the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code TIM for 20% off your first purchase. Well, here's what's happened. I think what's actually ruined all of this is technology is kind of ruined mm-hmm. people because people are now angry all the time. There's no they're constantly right. they're constantly be reinforced of yeah. like this is what I believe, this is this article, they're this so is that. They're so angry. Yeah, they're running hot. That you, holidays used to be a special time because people would drink alcohol and then have this flood of emotions mm-hmm. and see each other. Mm-hmm. Now people just hate each other all day, every day. It's like a time release Adderall versus doing a line of it. Yeah. I also think too, right? Like you said, it's like, you, you know, there was a, this booze is involved. There's this release of emotion and sometimes it's good. Sometimes you would get out. I fucking love you. You mean so much to yeah. me. Other times it was bad. You fucking stole my, you know, whatever. Right. But then in the morning or the next day, you reconciled. Right? right, like you're not reconciling over a political argument because you still feel you're right. And right, you're, you're, there's at least some sort of. I'm sorry, I was fucked up last night. I was out of line. That in like an Irish Catholic family is, it's essential. That's huge. It's that's huge. huge. It, it it's one of those things where technology is making people slowly less human. Yeah, and yeah. that's the unfortunate thing. Halloween was it the party route for you? How does it? Uh. Whew. No, I mean, as a kid, it was suburbs outside of Philly, just hardcore trick or treating. Like, right, you know, that was me too. But case. then you're, ma- you know, you become a man that first year. You throw an egg. This is yeah, why. Sure. The first year that my friends, like kids, like Alfred Kinesi, was popular. <laughs> He's maybe still popular. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Seemed to be over it. <laughs> but those kids. Johnny Maddox, Pat McCray. <laughs> when I got Johnny this, Mannix. yeah, those these were That's like a kids. great high school, great yeah. names, great. But this is eighth grade. Great we're going names. to Maddox's house. These were the cool kids, sure. and they were and they were g- genuinely cool. Like that's the thing about cool kids. People are like, oh, are they cool together? Yeah, cooler than you? Mm-hmm. They are cool. Sure. It's not a thing. They were much more fun to hang out with than you know my friends. So they invited me, and we threw eggs, Ooh. and we. Shaving cream stuff. Yeah. Was this mischief night? Did you do? Did you well, guys do this mischief was Halloween night? night. Halloween night. Halloween night. Long Island is my first, and I felt like, oh, I'm growing up because I'm with cool kids, and we're throwing eggs and we're vandalizing stuff. This is what cool kids. You feel do. like you're in a movie. Like yeah. you've seen this before. I'm not trick or treating like a bitch. Sure. I'm not walking around with a Frankenstein head yeah. and my mother. Yeah. I'm out there defacing property. Yeah. With my friends. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that was it's an important night for every child. Now, I don't know what they do now. They might do gang initiation now. <laughs> what do they do? Because no, they- no, it's put. Are they still vandalizing or is that even? That's like pussy now. I don't know. Now they're like swatting each other and having the feds. On the other end of that, you know what they're doing? Like my nieces and nephews, they don't go door to door anymore. Oh, interesting. Trunk or treat, they call it. Oh, I don't like this. That's so, it's so during, fucking whack. It's corny as shit. It's during the day, like maybe the day before, something leading yeah. up. They all drive to like the high, you know, the the football field in town. They park their cars all around it, open up their trunks, decorate their trunks. Now, why are they not going door to door? Is it because they- Danger, maybe? I don't know. Well, you know what's interesting? I think now, it was a COVID thing. A lot of COVID. people don't do it. So a lot of houses, you just knock, 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 and yeah, nobody's lights home. out. Yeah, people are like, we're not doing it. There used to be only one or two of them, and that's that. See, that's yeah. like a that's how you knew that was the creep of the neighborhood. Right. You never went by. They never had Christmas decorations or Thanksgiving decorations, and they didn't do anything on Halloween. That's how you knew to stay away. So when you're doing that shit at the at the football field, now now you you got no you got no judge trunk or treat. Week. Fucking insane. I don't Week. They've like been doing it. it for a decade, I'm telling you. And they Week. pull up in a parking lot? Everybody, yeah, and you're like, everybody backs their car into like a, make no. a big, you, like a horseshoe shape. Yeah, and then you decorate the back I'm of your car. Some of they it sell right now. decorations yeah. for the back of your car. That's I don't like this. And then no. so it's safe. Everybody's I parents would, are if there. If I had children, I would re- look at that up. Yeah, Set that's that up right Holy now. Holy shit. How? Holy God. I'd They've rather my kids bodies. get kidnapped. Yeah. I'd rather my kids kidnapped for a couple of th- days. For a couple of days than this. This ruins people's lives. Man. God. You got to have Halloween because, like you said, you got to have that rite of passage. That learning oh, there's moment, too. You got to go from the costume to all of a sudden one year you have a sweatshirt on, maybe a mask, and yeah. you got the pillowcase. Yes. Once you cross over to the pillowcase. Yeah. But like you didn't forget. That, was a, that was a life-changing moment it for you. It was a life-changing moment for me because 
That ain't happening at Trunk or Treat. You're not no. having a life changing yeah. moment. You're not learning anything at There's Trunk or Treat. There's something that happens when you're a teenager. You have to decide which kind of teenager you're going to be. Yes. A good one or a bad one. Uh -huh. I decided I was going to be a bad one. Uh -huh. I didn't hurt people <laughs> per se, but I stole money. I did drugs. You know, mm -hmm. I lied. Sure. I cheated, you know, when I could in school. Um, I didn't care about anything. My main goal from when I was 12 or 13 years old till, you know, when I was in my really mid-20s, but let's just say for the teen years, my main goal was to make myself happy. Mm -hmm. And I liked marijuana, <laughs> cocaine, sure. Percocet, Vicodin. I'd take a pill of morphine if you had it. Mm -hmm. I'd do a line of ketamine. I'd take an ecstasy. This guy parties, dude. With a little Mitsubishi symbol in it. Yeah. I would take, You're not getting that at Trunk or Treat. I would no. take a tab of acid. I'd take a little sugar cube of acid with the blotter, little red yeah, dot, yeah, yeah. acid in it. I would take I remember an the first time I saw that. Yeah, I'd take an eighth of shrooms. I'd smoke a Benson and Hedges unfiltered. If like a could, gentleman. If we could steal it if you get from your my hands friend's on it. mother, Barb. Barb. <laughs> I would do all these things because they made me happy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sitting in Oil City, which was this area of just oil drums, it was abandoned, and smoking a pack of Marlboro Lights, that we, Marlboro Reds even, that we stole from my friend's mother, and then puking mm -hmm. made me happy. Mm-hmm. Those were the times. Though. Those were the times. Life may not ever get better than that. What scares me now is the drugs are too intense. The kids are dying. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because they can't have that fun that we had. They're dying now. That little experimentation goes quick. It's quicker. It's a, it's a yeah. shorter road. They're doing fentanyl now. Yeah, it's crazy. Whatever it is now, they get to a point where it alters their life. Like, I remember running around Halloween, throwing some eggs, doing some shaving cream, smoking a little weed, yeah. stuff like that. Bad weed too. Bad Stems weed. Stems and seeds. Beasters. It's not good. Yeah. Take you know, or you take you take you do some psychedelics in your teen years, and I think you know that is okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't. I mean, not twelve, but like, if you're seventeen or eighteen and you and your buddies take some shrooms. That's when you, you know, do it. It's why you do it. That you got from the older guy that works at the restaurant that you work at, but of you had to drive course. a half an hour to get it. There was a there was a process. There involved. was a process. These problem are, solving. Those are life skills. Yeah. I see a lot of people that did don't grow up now. Yeah. I see a lot of people that don't grow up and it's weird emotionally. Meaning they'll have an apartment, they'll have money, they'll be able to pay their bills, but they're not emotionally growing up. They don't know anything about the world. And they don't know anything about people. And I go, how did that happen? Uh -huh. How did that happen? And I think technology has flattened everybody to the point where a lot of people's formative experiences are on the internet mm -hmm. and they're not in real life with real people. You learned a lot about yourself disappearing we, into the suburban night with Johnny Mannix. You're not kidding. You, you had fun. You had a good time and you, you, you go, okay, we can't do too much crazy shit because we'll go to jail. Right. Mm -hmm. And we can't fuck with these kids because they'll kill us. Yeah. And we got to learn to think, like, when me and my friend Shay went to his Aunt Deb's house in uh, in Rockaway, Breezy Point, and we knew, you know, you know, she was a fun woman. Mm -hmm. She liked Fleetwood Mac. She enjoyed Sangria. Ooh, Sounds like a great man, lady. That's a combo right I there. I mean, she's an Irish woman. She liked to flip-flop the Sangria. And she liked putting the keys in that car. <laughs> Firing it up. She liked starting that car. She had like a Firebird, something fun. Uh -huh. She liked starting that car. Because you know what? Who's, you know, who's telling her what? Nobody. Yeah. You have a couple of cocktails. She likes, she liked that, that scent. And there's no room in it. And we just knew what we could get away. We knew what we could steal. Mm -hmm. So we would take some of her absolute vodka. She liked, she liked, she liked, uh, well. And we would take some of our absolute. We'd, we'd do a couple of drinks, and then we'd, we'd pour some water in it. Yeah. We'd do this. These are, you'd know what and you could I, get away I, with. As long as that's not kept in the freezer, you're all yeah, right. Yeah. You you're okay. You don't. Now kids today barricade her in her bathroom with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Steal her car and go buy heroin. Take her 401k. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's not what you do. That's too yeah. much. Too much. Yeah. That's too much. You steal a little bit of booze. Mm -hmm. you, you get a little warmth. You go into the backyard. You do a Bernie. It's fun. People need to steal a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it, what happened to that? Everything now is like off the chain. 
I'm, I'm take. I'm, I just stole my aunt's car. I'm selling it, and I'm buying fentanyl. That's yeah. too much because you can't come back from that. Yeah. I feel like those little, those little, uh, those little steps of like, oh, I am this. I'm not that guy. I did that. That was a little too much. Right. I'm not that guy. Or Tim did that. That was too. Oh, I'm not. I'm not that yeah. guy. Like yeah. you learn. You got to be a little bit of a pussy. You got to keep yourself on a leash because the guys that aren't pussies die. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We all know a guy who's like, dude, that's the toughest guy I've ever met, and mm. he's dead now. I know seven of them. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The legitimate child thief started out going through the hall closet where the winter coats were, Ooh, picking what, yes, what was I've done in that. Finding yeah. a five. A that's maybe what, that's, a, what, the, maybe that's what the gentleman does. That when when you have a bunch of coats winter on coats. a bed oh. during Christmas, <laughs> I would start calling dealers at 1030 at night like, hello, Chico. That's God rest great. his soul. Yeah, they just checked in. They'll be out for a couple hours. Come by. So to me, I think... Uh, what we're losing is moderation. You're not wrong. Because you're, you're totally not wrong. We're not gonna. Nobody's gonna be a saint, and you shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. There's nothing funner than doing the wrong thing in in you know little little doses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With some sort of caution, with some sort of wits about you of like, all right, that you know, and and now there there is no. It's it seems like there was always in every high school class there was always. Five kids, ten kids are like, oh, those kids are fucking nuts. They're the ones that are crazy that end up dying or whatever. Now it's like half the class is that kid. It's you know like I that's mean? why Thanksgiving, which is the last holiday we, we really haven't covered, but Thanksgiving to me, there's something important the night before Thanksgiving. Sure. 100%. This is important. Mm -hmm. Here's what happens, in my view, the night before Thanksgiving. When, when you go away, I didn't go away to college. I went to community college, mm -hmm. and then I dropped out, right? But- I remember I had a friend who who was we were really tight, and he ended up going to community college, sticking with it, and then going to Cornell, which is like a really wow. good school, and then George Washington Jesus. University Law School. And I, I felt very deeply insecure because I was doing nothing with my life. You know what I mean? It's even doubt. But the point is, <laughs> the I'm point, doing all right. The first the first year you go back to that bar for me, it was the Blackthorn sure. Rockville Center. And you see all those guys that you were buddies with, you're still kind of in it. Oh, yeah. You're still in it that first year. But every subsequent year, it's a, you're a little. Diminishes. Their faces blur around the edges. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. That's why I think it's important the first few years after high school to go out. Yeah. That Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. Because you should know. What that feels like mm -hmm. to start to for the blurring to start. Yeah, for the for the separation for the. That's right. And you also come back and go, like I, I the same thing. Very similar upbringing in the suburbs in the north. And it was like we'd go to the pub and you'd get there and it was the guy who went straight to the pub from high school. Yeah. And the guy who went to fucking Duke or whatever or right. Harvard. Right. And you all come back and you're like, oh, Steve, you had you've been at the pub all year. Right. We just came back this. You're like, okay, I don't want to be Steve. Puts things in a perspective. Yeah, right. It's that little, like, you find out who you want to be and who you don't want to be. And then, like, as the group that the next year gets a little, if there's 10 guys, it comes to eight guys. Then five got four. And it's like, then it's just Steve and the other Steves from the year prior years sitting there drinking beers. But it's also a little bit of a dog show those first couple of years. Yeah, you show up it. representing. <laughs> yeah. You're peacocking a little bit. Yeah, of course. But then, yeah, it does go downhill. Then the, the owners change the bar. It's not the Ben Elbow anymore. Now it's called McGurk's. And it's, it's, it's <laughs> right. Like that. McGurk's is all right. Though. And the, owner, is and all right. The, the owner's talking to you now like you're an adult. Yeah. yeah. Do you, I knew I was an alcoholic when the owners of bars started talking to me like an adult. And uh, telling me about problems they were having. And yeah. I'm like, I'm coming here to get drunk <laughs> yeah. with my friends. We're still, like, young. Mm -hmm. We're still in our late teens. <laughs> we can't handle all of this. You know? So, to me, it's like, those are important moments that you need to have as, a, as an adult. To become a fully functioning adult. And I think the holidays and the activities around the holidays are important. And, and I just hope that there is a recognition of that and that you know we don't lose everything to the digital world you know yeah because the local bar is important very important very, very. important it can't all be a club it can't all be a dj it can't all be we're going to see uh diplo in vegas respect to him he follows me on instagram oh. enough with the marathons we don't care 
do the thing. <laughs> I ran a marathon. My point is this. And Marshmallow, but I don't want to start a beef <laughs> with this other one. Marshmallow, I know that you're more famous than me. I don't know why, but I know that you do your whatever. At SW Steakhouse right now, at the Win Las Vegas, they are doing this, which is one of my favorite restaurants. They have the Lake of Dreams show, a singing cigarette smoking frog who sings New York, New York, while I eat the chili rub ribeye, which you got rid of. You shouldn't have, but whatever. They are now serving a marshmallow cake. Marshmallow, who is apparently has some residency at the Win, uh, love, lovely SW Steakhouse, my favorite restaurant in Vegas. Marshmallow has a residency at the Win. They are serving a marshmallow cake with his dumb logo with the X's for the eyes, uh -huh. and it's the shape of that head he wears. Stop this. The marshmallow cake. $40, Chris. I'm not going to say your name, but we know who you are. $40, <laughs> chocolate mousse toasted marshmallow meringue. I'm a nougatine. Number one, how dare you not send me one for free? Number two, <laughs> stop it. It's, it's grotesque. You have a cake of your head. That it's not good for forty dollars. Is is it never enough? Can you talk to these people and say, please stop doing this? It's crazy. And meringue can kick rocks. Kick fucking Get rocks. Get out of here with that shit. <laughs> um, but what I what I want to say, what I what I want to what I want to close on is what your show to me, and the reason why I love it, the reason why a lot of people love it, it's hilarious. Thank you. But more important than that to me is that like your whether you realize it or not, you're chronicling. History. This is mm. fucking huge. You really, truly. I mean, I think that's a little lofty. <laughs> we talk about mayonnaise and Percocet, but that is history. Listen, there's going to be a time. There's going to be a time when you talk about a mayonnaise and Percocet sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> people are going to go, what's that? So, but no, it is true. It's like, I'm a big fan of inflating our, impo our importance, all of us. But uh, I, I listen to your show and I remember shit. That's now lost. Literally. Yeah, it's true. Shit that you, you it's lost. It's mm -hmm. a chronicle of, of a time gone by. It's a time gone by that you'll, you know, I remember I used to hang out at a bar called Lisa's Lounge. Fans of the show know this. It was named after a, a girl who died in a drunk driving accident. Oh, I bet you they do a good mozzarella her, stick there. Her father, you have no idea. <laughs> her father, her father put her picture in the middle of the bar and people would toast to her. They would go to Lisa oh. Oh. and then they would drink. And I asked this man, uh, there was this crazy woman, Jen, who used to come in and she would say, I'm having the fire department over because we're having a big party. And she put all these shaving dishes out and then nobody would come. And I would say to the bartender, I'd say, what's going on? They go, oh, Jen's mentally ill. She thinks she's having a party tonight. So we let her come yeah, here right. and have a fake party. And then this guy, George, would come in, who's, it was kind of misshapen and deformed. And they go, he lives in his car. Uh, he actually won a scratch off, this is true. He had a lot of money, and then he got in uh, with a hooker, and then she spent all his money. He lives in his car, and the only place he comes in to have a warm place is, is Lisa's Lounge. Um, and then there were these all these different people, and I said to the this guy uh, that opened this bar, like, you know, what is this place? Mm -hmm. And he's like, I open you know, because it was this really weird place. I was like 22, 23. I should not have been there, right? <laughs> Uh, and I was sitting there, and there was a woman, Marge, who used to come in, was old, she used to shit herself, and people would try to take her <laughs> Sounds out. Sounds like go, a great place. Go, Marge, you shit yourself. She'd go, you faggot. She'd scream, faggot, you're all faggots. It was crazy. I've told all these stories. It was all crazy. Um, and he said, you know, I opened this place so that people would have a place to go that don't have a place to go on a Christmas. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's amazing. And it really... and. I used to think that was so funny. Like, I used to be like, ha, 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 ha. As you get older, mm -hmm. as you get older and you look back on it and it had great holiday lights those three months. Yeah. You know, I, can sm I can smell the place. Yeah. December, January. Um, there was something really, and I, and I remember hearing that and scoffing at it and being like, and it was just such a funny joke to tell you, describe all the crazy things that happened. And then the guy goes, you know, everyone's doing coke and drinking. And he goes, I just a place that, but I will tell you this. Uh, it, it, I went there on Christmas one year. Mm -hmm. I was in like a, you know, I was at a thing with my family and I wanted to go. Places like that are important, you know, for mm -hmm. people. Of course, sure. You know, it is like a weird thing that even though we make fun of them and nobody... Nobody wants that to be the case mm -hmm. with their life, but then some people do end up in that situation, 
You know what I mean? Where it's like, that's there. That's like an inst- yeah. That's like an institution of a play. It's like a revolving yeah. door. It's like Jan yeah. or whoever, Marge. They're there every night. Yeah, you're there when you need it. It's like right. a crutch. You're there twice. Right. When you need it, but it's right. there when you fucking need it. And when you think about it, that's the place that Aunt Riri went. No, when it wasn't Christmas, oh, when nobody wanted to know days. Her. That's what fed into the dip, and, and she, that's what fed into the family. And she told and, everybody, "Tomorrow yep. I'm not going to be here." And they exactly. said, "Why?" And then she said, "I'm making my dip. Yeah, I'm make making the, the dip. dip. I'm making my dip." So that's what fed it. I'm making my dip tomorrow. You'll see me Sunday. I'll be back. I'll see you You'll Sunday. See me Sunday. H. Foley, Kevin Ryan, the Are You Garbage podcast on YouTube and Patreon. Mm-hmm. A podcast about history. <laughs> it's like, it's like CBS, <laughs> CBS Sunday morning. A podcast about time. The history well, of the American family. How great family. would it be if just, I want to see CBS Sunday morning. <laughs> you guys on, they're like, two gentlemen talking about Cheetos and bath mats. <laughs> we're, 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 as, the, as, the, as the great Tim Dillon once yeah. said, we're quoting you. A, right. oh, my mom would love that. As a, pod, a, you know, as a podcast, they chronicle a time gone by. A time when people smoked cigarettes inside of Pizza Hut. Oh. Andy Rooney shitting yeah. on us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, go see these guys, Pittsburgh Improv, Helium, Buffalo. Uh, they're going to be in Toronto, Canada. Go see them at the Royal. Go see them uh, in Michigan. Go see them in Chicago. You guys got to be Fourth show added in yeah. Chicago. Fourth show added in Chicago. Yeah. I mean, uh, Chicago Theater is my favorite theater in the country. Mm-hmm. Chicago is my favorite market to do comedy. Chicago is a great comedy Boston. town. Boston Chicago as well. Boston. Yeah. It's kind of designed for us. Mm-hmm. The food, the people. Sure. Right. I love the Chicago. Big city. Yeah. They're also in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Sacramento, San Francisco, San Jose, Washington, D.C., and, of course, Bringing it to a close mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in late December, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Where you guys hail from. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very good. Who cares about my... I don't even care. Don't come. Just- then don't <laughs> come. Don't come. Who okay. cares? I'll, I'll stay home. Uh, the Are You Garbage on Patreon. Go subscribe to them on YouTube as well. Uh, you can get all my dates if you want. TimDillonComedy.com. We're going hard for the next few months. And we're getting off the road in February. And we've got... All kinds of other stuff happening. There's a thing that I can't talk about that's coming out in November that I'm not talking about. It <laughs> will be really maybe fun, but it's not something that I'm talking about. And I stand in solidarity with Fran Drescher and the Guild. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>